17 hives to 40, my rapid bee expansion in just three months. I wanna be a commercial beekeeper and I'll need 200 to 250 hives to make a full-time income. This is one step of that process, me going from 17 to 40. Here's how I'll do it. Today is April 20th and this hive probably only has about half a frame of brood. But by feeding it pollen patties, these are 15% pollen patties from Global Patties with Apis Biologics, uh, otherwise known as rocket fuel added to them. I'm giving these to all my hives right now, even the small ones. And this will help them grow the brood nest faster when we get these wet rainy days it's sprinkling right now. The bees will still be able to keep their uh, brood fed with pollen substitute rather than cannibalizing the brood and uh, retracting the brood nest based on the weather. So through that and equalizing, so I'll take frames of capped emerging brood from my strongest hives that will probably swarm if I don't pull the brood from them and give them to these smaller colonies. And as long as I shake some bees in with them and I choose the emerging brood, which will heat itself very quickly, it'll help these colonies grow and I'll probably move this uh, hive in, into a 10 frame box probably in the next two to three weeks. Then in early May, when all my colonies are building up and I know who's the strongest, best temperament, most productive, I'm going to UBO test them. This is a new mite resistance test where you spray this special synthetic uh, hormone onto the bees into this little circle here of capped brood. And you do that three times within, I think like a minute. And then once you've done that, you come back two hours later and you see how many of those have been uncapped. And that's how you base how mite resistant those bees are. So I'll UBO test them uh, and I'll only UBO test my most uh, strong hives, the ones that built up for spring the best, and they have to have great temperament and be very calm and gentle bees. And I'll do this round probably like the 7th of May or so. So I need to move my hives up to Albion, Maine because I'm gonna be taking a job up there and I don't wanna have to come back for my bees. So I'm gonna move the bees when it's the easiest, when they're in one, just one deep and they're really light in early May as well. So I'm gonna take all three of the live colonies that are over there and move them over here to my old location, somewhere in this area, there's plenty of space. And then I'm gonna to go to my other three out yards and move all those colonies back here as well. So then I'll have seven, all 17 colonies here and 15 of those I will load up on a trailer I think on May 11th is my estimate right now. Close up their entrances the night before. And then once the, you know, the next morning comes, I will take off relatively early before it gets too hot and drive them up to Albion. There'll be four-way pallets for me to transfer the bees from their bottom boards onto the four-way pallets. And then the four-way pallets will be put into a bee yard that my boss will provide me. He said he's got plenty around Albion, so I'll use whatever, you know, whatever he provides for me. And he'll help me set up the bear fence as well. I'll make sure before we leave the yard that I let my dad touch the bear fence so he gets shocked to make sure it works. Uh, I'm sure I'll be on board for that, so I'm excited. All right, so I'm trying to decide whether I should transfer them into the four-way pallet and add a deep or not add a deep. So some of the hives will be all the way, you know, 10 frames of bees at this point, or eight frames of bees. And so they'll need space uh, soon. So while I'm up there, since it's an hour drive, I'm just gonna add a deep to them. Some colonies will only be, you know, five, six, or seven frames. Probably seven frames, I'd still add the deep, but you know, six or less, they're probably gonna be okay for a few weeks without any intervention. So the ones that I do wanna add deeps to, what I'll do is check the forecast. If it's really cold nights and not very many warm days, then what I'll do is add the deep below the hive. So uh, this hive completely full of brood in the other box, but it's really cold the next few nights. It's still May, so it can get cold. So what I'll do is add my box of drawn comb below and then put my box of bees on top like that. So then the lower box, the bees will slowly expand down into, but that it won't chill the brood. If I put the box above, then it could chill the brood. The other situation would be, I look at the forecast, I'm like, wow, it's gonna be a record heat wave. It's gonna be really warm at night and nice during the day. So this colony still needs space. They you know, have eight frames of bees. So I take my drawn box of comb and I put it right on top. 
And so since I'm adding this extra box to this big colony, it will give me probably two weeks uh, before there's any issues with swarming for this box. So this is just buying me time so I don't need to come up all the time and drive two hours, one hour there, one hour back to, you know, deal with the bees. So after I have all 15 colonies moved all the way up to Albion, I'll still leave two behind. So one will be my breeder queen, whatever hive I determine that to be. I'll leave them in a single. And if they're getting really strong, as they should be if they're a breeder queen, then I will pull frames the brood and give it to other weaker hives. So that shouldn't be an issue. Then the second hive will be <laughs> the mean hive. I'll put it on screen from probably the meanest hive out of my 17, which, I mean, they're not terrible, but I'm gonna kill their queen. I'm annoyed, so I'm not gonna deal with that any longer. So I'll pinch their queen. And uh, this is a week before I graft. My goal date for grafting is May 15th. So <clears throat> in the hive that I'm going to be pinching the queen, I'll go in there, find her, kill her. Then the other hive, my breeder queen hive, I will go through and make a nuke. So I'll find one frame of honey and probably two frames of brood. Ideally like, you know, maybe capped brood and I'll put those into a nuke. So my queen and my three frames of brood are in my nuke. And then these bees go queenless for about a week. And I'll of course add more frames in. So now I have both hives queenless for about a week before I graft. They'll both be completely packed. And if they're not, I will take some brood with me back from Albion or before I send them to Albion, I'll boost up these two colonies, make sure they're just absolutely packed singles. So especially because once I pull the nuke from this hive, that'll, you know, pull them back a decent amount, but I'll give them a ton of brood, you know, before, so they'll be completely packed. So then on May 15th, I will graft. So I have two cell builders right here and two cell bar frames. I have a couple more bars. Uh, I'm not sure where they are, but I'll find them before I need them. So both of them will get 35 cells each. Ideally it'd probably be 30 because they'd make slightly better queens, but I need a little bit more than that. So I'll graft 70 queens into them. I'll be using these JZBZ um, cell bars and the cups, of course, they're just little plastic and they come on and off. Pretty simple. A couple of them always fall off and just seems like they're kind of, you know, bad cups, but no big deal. I'm grafting 70, so I should have, you know, maybe two of them fall off after I put them into the cell builders. And then that gives the bees 68 of them to accept. So that shouldn't be a huge issue. I use the Chinese grafting tool. It's, I don't know, I just find it to be the easiest uh, tool to use. It's got a little plunger to push them out. And you just really need to find one that works for you because they bend different amounts. None of, they're not consistent at all. Some will bend real easy like that and others won't really bend at all. So this is the, what I use the Chinese grafting tool and what I will be using this year. But you know, depends depends on the person. Let me know if you've used Chinese grafting tools in the comments. I, I think they're the way to go if you're using a grafting tool. Unless you're fancy and you have a master grafter from Pierce. I'd like to get one of those someday. One other thing when it comes to the cell building, the cell builders I'm using uh, is kind of a variation on the Corey Stevens method. He does this with double deeps. Um, I'm going to try it with a single deep. You know, I think it's going to work fine because the concept still applies. You're both going to be packed with bees and I'm going to graft into them and I'm not going to graft too many cells. That way I get the best, highest quality cells. So I just thought I'd mention that if people are going to ask me what kind of cell buildings, starter finisher, whatever kind of cell building uh, type I was using. And it's a variation on the Corey Stevens method where he pulls out the queen and grafts into it. But I'm going to I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I graft and I'm doing it with singles instead of doubles. So we'll see how it works, but I'm pretty confident that I will do just fine with it. So out of those 70 grafted, let's assume, you know, two fall off the, the bars, then I'm gonna guess I'll get roughly 53 of them. So I'll use 30 for myself and I'd like to sell the other 23. Um, I'll put my email in the description. You can let me know uh, if you're interested, they'd be ready for pickup prop uh, estimated date right now on the 
you know, 23rd to 25th in, in that range. So hopefully sell those for $15 with a cell protector on each one. And then the other 30, I will stick into an incubator. I'd show you it if I had it right now, but I haven't ordered yet. I think I've picked out a model, but if you have a favorite incubator, uh, go ahead and drop it in the comments and I'll take a look. I haven't fully decided yet what kind of incubator I wanna use, but I'll take all 30 of my cells that I want for splits, put them in an incubator, and then plug them into my car. I think I'll need some kind of inverter. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I need to research this more, but this is my rough idea. And I will take them up to Albion and start making splits. So now that it's May 25th and I have all my queen cells ready, or May 24th, somewhere in that area, I'm gonna use all these nuke boxes that I've amassed over the years, as well as that one, the red ones. I should have 10 of those uh, for that day and then another 20 other nuke boxes. So I'll use all of these nuke boxes to make splits. So I'll show you what I'm gonna put in my splits. So here's how I'll be making up the nukes. I'll go through my single deep. By May 25th, pretty much every single hive will have a full deep of bees. So I'll go through, I'll look for two frames of capped brood. It's okay, there's capped brood, emerging, emerging bees. Put that into the nuke. Then I'll find a second frame of capped brood, put it into the nuke. Then I find a third frame, which has honey on it. So I'll put that food frame, honey or nectar, whatever, whatever works. And I'll fill out the rest of the nuke with two undrawn frames because I don't really have enough drawn frames to add that to the nuke. And once that new queen emerges and she starts to lay, the hive really starts to draw out comb really quickly because they're really happy and they got lots of young bees, which are really important for drawing new comb. So that's how I would split it. And that's what I'd put in my splits. Some of the single deeps, because I'll have nine singles, or sorry, nine doubles and six singles. Some of the six singles will need to make two nukes from them or one and a half or something like that. So I'll pull another two frames of brood and one frame of food and put it into another nuke box. So that would leave them probably with four frames of brood and no frames of food. So I would find some honey frames and instead of taking their honey frames, just uh, add the honey frames that are in storage into the nukes. So that would leave them with some food or add some sugar syrup. And it will be hard to make this many splits on single deeps because there's just not enough bees in one deep box to really fill two nukes and leave a significant amount behind. So I'll have a cell builder, the mean hive that I pinched the queen. They won't have much brood left in there. But what they will have is plenty of bees. So I will use that as kind of my like, you know, shook swarm. Like basically I'll just shake those bees into any of the splits that needs some extra bee coverage which will likely be from the single deeps that I had to take one, uh, more than one nuke from, either one and a half or two nukes from them. So then it's a similar process for the double deeps. I'll have had the second deep on for over two weeks. And so it should be completely full of brood. And I'll start the double deeps off with some honey when I give it to them. So they should still have honey and will be in mid-May. And I haven't been in Albion before, but I would assume it's relatively similar to here. So I think that there'll be enough nectar to, so they don't starve and so they you know, maintain the amount of food they have in the hive, if not possibly increase it. So each of these should probably have around 12 frames of bee, or 12 frames of brood and probably at least four or five frames of feed. And then the other frames are either empty or undrawn. So I would go through each one, all the double deeps, I should have nine double deeps. I'll find my two frames of capped emerging brood and my one frame of honey, that's one nuke. And then I do the same thing again. And then once, once I have my two nukes taken out of each double deep, I will hopefully add back comb, but I think that I'll probably be out of comb at that point. So what I'll do is give them foundations, probably checkerboard it into the brood nest. And once that's checkerboarded in, they'll have plenty of space for several weeks. So I can probably leave all these hives after I split them alone for my plans probably like at least two weeks uh, before I look at them again, because they should have plenty of space if I just split them and gave them extra room and took away a lot of their bees. So these hives, the doubles will be left as doubles. And of course I won't be adding a box to the singles after I split them. So all the, both configurations will grow after I split them for two weeks before I come back to look at them. I know they won't swarm or 
very high chance they won't swarm in those two weeks. Let me know in the comments if that's how you make nukes, but that's really how I prefer to do it. Two frames of capped emerging brood, ideally, but at least capped brood. And then one frame of honey or, you know, nectar, sugar water, whatever, one food frame. That I've had really good success, and those bees typically grow really fast if you're if you give them enough bees to keep those two frames of brood warm, they grow really, really fast. On the day that I'm splitting as well, I should have mentioned this, but I'm gonna bring up both of my cell builders with me. Once I take the cells out of there, I'll put them into an incubator, then I'll close up the hives and take them with me to Albion. And the hive, um, I'll have you know two hives plus the breeder queen will be in a nuke. And what I'll do with that nuke is re-add her to her original hive. I might split that hive. I don't know how much brood they'll have left because the queen wouldn't have been laying in there for a week, but they still have should, should have some brood, so I'll take that brood out, or some of it at least. And then I'll reintroduce that queen in a queen cage because I really don't want them to kill her because they will have not been with her for a little while, so they might be kind of antsy. I don't know if they'll accept her right away. But if she's my best queen, then I definitely will put her in a queen cage, let her stay there for at least a week, and then release her. So that's kind of my plan when it comes to you know, re-adding that breeder queen back into her hive. So I'll come back two weeks after I split to go in and check for queens. And I'll have started them off with three drawn frames in the middle and then these two frames would be undrawn. So I'd inspect and if it's a queen right one, I probably should see eggs on the middle, um, the middle frame, this frame, and then probably some eggs on this frame or possibly this frame. All I'll see after two weeks is probably just eggs and some really young larvae. And then on <clears throat> the, uh, I should get 22 queens back out of the 30 that I in introduced. So the eight that where the queen doesn't come back, what I'll do is take all these frames, you know, these will have just probably a little bit of food left, all the brood will be hatched by then. And I'll take those frames and give them to the other mating nukes. So I'll combine these ones and put away the boxes for now because I don't want them to go laying worker. I'm not gonna add another queen cell to them. They're just done for now. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with them. So I'll combine the eight that, I, that are queenless and so then I'll be down to 22 mating nukes. Oh, and when I'm introducing the queen cells, I forgot to mention this, I'm gonna feed them sugar water, which will help with the introduction of the queen cells. And then a few days later, I'll hit these nukes with oxalic acid uh, in the form of glycerin. I'll mix it into glycerin and dribble it over the bees, OA dribble. That way, when I sell my nukes or just even all the other nukes that I'm not gonna sell, will have practically no mites because there won't be any capped brood yet. But the bees will be locked into the box because uh, they'll be older larvae. So I'll hit them with the oxalic acid right before the brood is capped, the first brood is capped. So probably I'm thinking around June 10th or so is when the brood will be capped. So around that time period, I'll go through all these colonies or June 18th or so. So I'll make sure that all these get treated with oxalic acid glycerin. Um, that way I'll kill like 99% of the mites in one shot. So it'll be a very effective treatment. So then we're at two weeks post split when I'm checking all the queens. I'll go through all the doubles, you know, and all just the singles. And when I'm going through them, I'm going to equalize them. So I'm going to make sure all the singles have hopefully two weeks post split, maybe seven frames of brood, six, frame of, six frames of brood, and maybe the doubles are around 10 frames of brood. The bees should be rapidly drawing comb, and if they're not, I'll probably start feeding them sugar water at that time. Then the really big singles or doubles, I'll add supers to. I'm not sure if I'm going to add, um, well, I might add honey supers. I might just add more deep boxes because I doubt they'll make any honey um, since there'll be you know thousands of colonies in Albion near where mine are. So they probably wouldn't make that much honey anyway. And so I'd rather just get more deep, drawn, uh, deep comb drawn out. So I'll probably put deep you know, another box of deep frames like this onto all the hives. Um, but regardless, add, add space two weeks after the split to make sure they don't swarm and, you know, to allow them to keep growing. So then when I'm going through these nukes, um, my five or eight strongest ones uh, out of the 22, 
I will sell off. So I'm going to be pre-selling four of them and then hopefully selling eight, assuming I get the amount that I want and things don't go wrong. But I, I'm pre-selling four of them. So just uh, send me an email. I'll link it in the description or you can reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, so I'll sell eight of these and the goal is to hit them all with oxalic acid glycerin. Uh, that way they'll have almost a zero mite count when I sell them on my estimated date is June 28th because I want all the bees, uh, all of the new queens bees to start hatching before I sell them. That way it's a really good product. So when I sell the nukes, this frame will be capped brood or well brood through at least three frames of brood. And then these two outside frames will be drawn by the time I sell them. There'll be a mix of food and brood. I'm not sure the exact mix, but they should have at least, you know, two sides of a frame of food left. And then once you transfer them to your nuke, uh, your 10 frame deep, they will instantly explode. I'll, I'm only selling the best eight ones out of 22. So they'll be really strong and big and uh, I'm selling them for 225 each. So now that we're into late June, I'm going to be transferring all these nukes into 10 frame boxes. I already have my other 16 queen rent colonies. And then I'll be taking these healthy young nukes, transferring them into 10 frame boxes. And that way they're ready to be moved on four way pallets all the way up to a rustic county. Uh, so they'll, they'll be trucked three or four hours north on to the potato fields. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. So then I would have 30 hives um, up north on four-way pallets and then on June 28th I would sell off my eight nukes um, so that'll be interesting I've never sold nukes before so if you have any tips for selling nukes I'm not going to take a deposit but just let me know if you have any experience that you think uh, would be useful for me to know so I'm not exactly sure when my bees will go up north it's any I, I asked my boss and he said anywhere between mid-June and early July so I'm assuming that they'll get taken up in early July. And my plan is pretty much to graft as soon as I can. Once we get up there, I should have at least one strong double deep. And I'll probably graft 35 cells or so uh, just to be safe. And then I'm gonna make up 25 more nukes. So I should have 30 full size colonies by that. Some in doubles, most of them in singles. And so I'll split everyone. The singles that were nukes, I will have, I will have treated with oxalic acid glycerin when they had no capped brood. So they should be pretty much free of mites. And then the other bees, I'll probably treat them one week post split. So I'll probably graft around, let's just say the 5th of July. And then on the 15th of July, I will make all the splits and then drop all the cells. And then a week after around the 22nd, I will just get my mite test done and then treat uh, with formic acid on my larger colonies that have uh, enough mites. And then once that's done, I will check another week later in around the first August for the queens. And when I'll know if they're all they're mated after two weeks, I'll combine all the ones that aren't there. And so that should put me at 48 colonies because if I make 25 splits, roughly 18 queens will come back. So that puts me up at 48 queen right hives. So since it's August 1st and I'm all the way up in a rustic on the potato fields, my boss said that we'd get a flow from the clover. And so I would get to make a fair amount of clover honey for my bees and they would build up on that for winter. It'd probably be a really good winter feed because it's not high in ash content and all the nukes would be able to build out into single deeps or I'm going to overwinter 10 of my hives as nukes. So uh, 30 of them I want in single or double deeps. Uh, I'll probably split everyone down to single deeps so I have enough boxes because uh, I think I only have 30, 30 deeps. And then the other 10 will be in uh, these red, red nukes, um, polystyrene. And then the other uh, eight I will have in temporary nuke boxes and I will fill any losses or dead outs. I also have three queens in their third season and you can let me know what you think in the comments about requeening but I've requeened every all my queens every year and for the first time this year I won't be doing that but I will be requeening my queens that will be in their third season so two years old. I have three of them um, I'm going to mark the hives so I know and then in August I will requeen them with nukes and that way they'll almost surely be accepted especially if they're in a honey flow and that way I'll have all queens that are either 
uh, in their first or second season. And then, the, the, so those eight nukes, three of them will be used for requeening, and then I have a five built in as a buffer. So the other five, <clears throat> I will combine with other hives. So if a queen's struggling or a nuke's struggling, then I'll slowly weed them out. So I'll, you know, pinch the queen, add the nuke, and even if the hive's weak and has a bad queen, they should be fine because I'm adding at least probably three frames of brood from that nuke in to the established hive, plus giving them that new, brand new queen. So it'll make sure my hives are strong next year. So I assume that, you know, requeen three, and then I'll have five extras, which I will use, you know, distribute among whatever hives struggle. Um, and that should put me at 40 hives for winter, which is really the goal and what I've been building towards. And if you like more content about, you know, splitting and planning and how I, you know, manage this all, please hit that like button. It just lets me know that's something you're interested in. Just to give people context on really how far, far north I'll be, a lot of Aroostook County, it's, a, it's the largest county in Maine, I believe, but it's uh, much of it's within an hour of the Canadian border. So I don't know how close I'll be, but we'll, I'll be like really in the absolute middle of nowhere. It will be <laughs> incredibly remote. So it will definitely be experience and will definitely be bare fences. So uh, I'm excited to share that with you all this summer. I'm, it's gonna be really interesting and a inter uh, very fun experience, I think for me. So my boss offered me to head down south and bring my bees all the way south with him. But I don't, for, he said, well, I'll work for like 70 hours a week in Georgia during the winter time. You know, once the bees get going in, well, I guess in spring, um, in late winter. So I don't think I'm gonna take my bees down. Hopefully I can get them moved down from Arusik all the way to Albion, which is like more mid coast Maine. Um, and that way they'll have less long of a winter and build up sooner. And I won't, uh, I'll be able to take care of them more easily in the spring when I come back to help them make nukes in May next year. So my goal is to, you know, get it back down and I hopefully will have 40 for winter. That's really the goal. And uh, I'm just really excited for the season. I can't wait for it to get going. And I really had a great time planning out what I wanted to do this year. It was a good exercise. So I will get everything done to be on the right path to get there. So I really just can't wait. Now that you've heard my entire splitting plan for doubling my apiary in 2024, you probably want to see me actually do the splitting in real action. So check out this video right here.